happy Mother's Day. Say a little bit. So we just did um, uh, Heart Sutra. So um, praising the Lady, Noble Lady Parjna Paramita. So in our tradition, uh, emptiness uh, and cause and effect are saying the same thing. So we don't divide the two into um, different realms. And uh, some New Age philosophies and then uh, Vedic Bra Brahmanical traditions, uh, they're divided into like this emptiness over here, cause and effect over here, <laughs> there's God over here, or the creative principle over here, and then there's the manifestation over here. For us, um, emptiness and appearance, emptiness, cause and effect um, are united. <clears throat> so that is the basic uh, uh, mother principle uh, because the emptiness uh, and cause and effect is the root of everything, isn't it? Yeah, it's the source. So, um, Maybe ancient people um, didn't know very much about technology, um, but uh, or the technology that we have now. But um, at some point, they figured out that human beings have to come from mothers. You know, so this they thought that's this is really important <laughs> to know this. So. Uh, we uh, we also know that it has to come from uh, the union of emptiness and cause and effect, emptiness and appearance. So the union of emptiness appearance, um, as we could say, kind of the objective quality, um, truth, the prajna is the, uh, and the wisdom mind is, sometimes we say, subjective. But actually, they're not divided either. The, the knowing and what we know is uh, united in our tradition. Uh, so once again, we're not um, have a world where uh, one thing's over here and another thing's over there. The, the knowing and the known um, are united, are interdependent. Uh, emptiness and cause and effect and appearance are interdependent. And we recognize that um, that's the source, that's the mother, like that. So that's why the, the Buddhist tradition, um, when we follow, uh, uh, says, you know, we we worship the, the mother Pajamparamita, um, whether she appears as Yashit Sogyo or Tara or um, Vajagini or so forth. But um, it's uh, not necessary to have uh, actual uh, you know, female form to, in our tradition to be mother, we could say, you know, <laughs> uh, many things are, are mothers in that sense that the, they're the activity of uh, cause and effect, the activity of emptiness that brings things about, right? So that's the mother. So in our tradition, we're not static. The, um, the mother principle is not a static uh, situation at all. It's a dynamic situation because it's in the continual process of uh, creation that um, doesn't have a creator and a creation, create, uh, created thing separate, right? In uh, conventional theistic religions or even conventional yogas, the creator and the creation are, are separated, and that becomes a big problem. But in our tradition, um, the uh, process is united, but for the sake of uh, the practice, sometimes we say cause and effect, or uh, appearances, or skandhas, and then sometimes we say emptiness, just like to walk, we um, do one <laughs> at a time like that, uh, we don't hop like birds. So that's confusing to us human beings, that um, to move we have to alternate, and yet it's one process, right? So if we hopped like birds, um, 
we probably wouldn't be confused because everything would be kind of one. So we say and other traditions are hopping like birds, you know, because they, they try to make everything one. But uh, the Buddha said, no, it's not one. It's um, not separate. It's uh, interdependent. So the mother of Prajnaparamita is uh, interdependence itself, right? The complete um, perspective like that. So um, that's the realization we're after, right? And of course, there are many skillful means like uh, shamatha practice, vipassana practice, deity yogas, tantras, mahamudra, sokchen, washing dishes, chopping wood, <laughs> vegetables, you know, whatever is necessary to um, bring about this, this real uh, joining. Um, so I want to salute the people that are, uh, you know, physical human form mothers, but also people that have, you know, completely uh, realized the real, you know, the real mother principle that uh, is part of everything, really, right? So um, the Vajrayana tradition um, uh, sometimes loses its way, I would say, but uh, over history. Um, but uh, hopefully, here at Lions Roar, we're, um, we can make the Lions Roar. Um, Lions Roar doesn't always have to be like male lion, it could be a lioness roar, too, you know. But uh, in either case, it's recognizing the um, the mother principle, recognizing the source, right? Where, where does where does uh, where does it all come from, right? So um, sometimes, if people are um, having some good practice in darshan, I, I might say, "Where do you come from? Do you know where you come from?" And do you know where you go? It's maybe easy, easier to say, um, where are you, right? Someone can go, I'm right here. <laughs> but uh, even that's actually difficult. Where are you right now? That's difficult. But uh, generally, can you, can you answer, where do I come from? Where do I go and where am I right now? Difficult, right? That's difficult practice. It's like the philosophic side, but then uh, are we able to you know, really show and demonstrate our wisdom of where do we come from? Can we demonstrate the mother right on the spot, right? And bring that forth right on the spot. That's That takes some actual practice, right? Because we tend to like, um, separate emptiness and cause and effect, emptiness and appearance, we, we tend to be um, what I call, um, well, we tend to be Brahmins, right? Let's say, well, you're not doing Buddhism, you're doing, um, you're doing Vedic yoga. <laughs> As the Buddha said, no, it's, you know, we're not separating uh, emptiness and the functioning of the world, right? There's not a static emptiness over here with you know, movement over here. So um, to all the teachings, we realize the unity of um, uh, emptiness and cause and effect, which the Buddha um, said, oh, that's interdependence, right? So every once in a while, um, we should read through um, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa's uh, Three Principal Aspects of the Path and, and Praise of Relativity, because um, he's basically like, like, wow, um, no wonder no one gets this. It's so incredibly simple, right? <laughs> but it's the key to everything. It's the mother, right? So um, maybe technology has gone far. We can do genetic testing, but um, uh, you know, in the old days, I mean, uh, people might not know their father, right? But they would, gen you know, generally know their mother, or the mother would know the child, right? So we say sometimes in highest yoga tantra, the uh, mother and uh, child clear light come together. <laughs> and talking about mothers, like one of the stories I like is uh, 
um, from uh, King Solomon, maybe Hasidic story, I don't know. So um, maybe it's a little misogynist, I don't know, you can tell me, but there, um, there was an argument and uh, they came before Solomon, uh, they're arguing over whose child it was, right? People know the story and um, probably already, already argued before <laughs> different, different people, um, but, uh, Finally got to um, got to court and Solomon okay listened and then said um, well um, you you can't make up your mind so um, we're we're just gonna have to kill the baby cut it in half you know? and uh, if people know what the next thing happened yeah so one of the mothers one of the women said uh, that's okay she can keep the baby. So what did that prove? That's the real mother. Yeah. So it's, similar, it's a little bit like that, you see. You know, um, uh, so that recognition of actually, um, you know, the real, the real motherhood, right? So we, um, in our tradition, we have to be a little bit wise like Solomon. We have to uh, test ourselves a little bit because the tendency is we, we are on automatic pilot otherwise known as samsara. So we have to test ourselves. So it's a process of systematic investigation, uh, systematic scientific methodology, if you will, um, a science of mind, as um, Robert Thurman calls it, so that we know, like, when we do this, this happens. When we don't do this, that doesn't happen, just like that. So that is noticing... Um, cause and effect in a, a correct emptiness way. Because when we're not seeing cause and effect properly, cause seems uh, unrelated to a effect, you see. Um, it seems very solid, like cause over here, effect is over here. But um, when we see it correctly, then we realize when there's no cause, there can't be any effect. So I said earlier in meditation at 10 o'clock, um, Shariputta heard those words of the Buddha um, just from a monk that was coming away, a novice monk that was coming away from a talk, and uh, Shariputta had developed enough, so like it exploded in his head like a duh, like so freaking obvious. If you take away the cause, you won't have the effect like that. Now, when we hear it, we just kind of go, well, that's interesting, but what about Mahamudra? <laughs> but that is Mahamudra, right? You just you, you just see it so clearly. It's just so obvious like that. So that um, there's the content of if there is no cause, there can't be effect. Um, and, but then there's the, the complete obviousness, right? So sometimes people go, uh, what's, a, what's clarity? What's clarity mean? Um, you know, it's like, it's really obvious, um, and it's the completely obvious world, and that's why um, clever Dharma students have a hard time with Mahamudra, because you want something kind of like nifty, instead of just saying, well, it's obvious the grass is green and the sky is blue, you know? So, we, but we're thinking we have to come up with something more interesting than that, but um, the real mother is completely obvious. It's obvious who the mother is, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like that. So maybe um, uh, we can have a little bit of discussion if people like or say a little bit about what Mother's Day is for them or mothering or whatever we like. So we have a little extra time. But um, generally, uh, uh, it's it's so completely obvious that it's embarrassing, you know. <laughs> 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 like that. So, of course, you know, the Buddha, um, uh, you know, like thought for a second about teaching because it's so obvious that people will get it. But also maybe he was thinking like, I should, I, I should have figured this out a long time ago, you know. <laughs> but uh, we're happy that he did teach out of compassion. So, um, you know, they're very... The very obvious nature, like it's obvious who the mother is. 
when you when you apply um, the wisdom mind, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe we can have some discussion or or not or whatever we like. Yeah. Thank you, Rinpoche. I was wondering if um, it kind of made me think that maybe being lost in samsara is a bit like being a lost child. Yeah, um, I think so. You've lost sight of your mother, yeah. and then Dharma practice is a mm -hmm. bit like calling out for her to find you again. Yeah, that's why, right. Why is it so, since it is so obvious, it is so simple, why do we lose sight so easily? We keep getting lost, you know? Even if you can kind of intellectually come back to it for a moment, it's easy to kind of drift off and run away again. Uh, the 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 simple but hard answer is that um, repetitive par patterns are extremely uh, persistent and strong. Like that, um, which is like good news if we're doing the right thing, and <laughs> then we kind of keep doing the right thing, you know. But. Um, uh, we we love patterns. We love karmic um, chains, and um, <clears throat> they're uh, they're not they're not easy to change. So most of the time, um, we uh, have to create a competing karmic chain. You know, we have a habit, right? And then to change the habit, we we can't just slam on the brakes. We have to uh, create another positive habit. Um, that's competing with it, right? And um, that's a large part of uh, the Dharma journey. Um, it's only, uh, you know, toward after a, a period of time that um, we, uh, you know, th you know, think, okay, we can just take our foot off the gas. You know? So we're like a runaway train. It's like old style kind of Western. There's a runaway train and then Someone's screaming, I gotta get off the train. And then, you know, like uh, someone's galloping on their horse, you know, Indiana Jones or something, and jump onto the horse, you know, like that. So um, we have to generally, you know, create a, a different karmic chain. It's really hard to immediately say, there's really no runaway train. I can just take my foot off the accelerator, right? Um, like Shariputra. Is, we, we do need to put in a lot of concentration, a lot of stability to do that. Like, oh, oh, you mean I just, you know, it's embarrassing when people, you know, sure, it's happened to me a number of times, you know. Um, Judy Taylor, my office manager, just says, well, have you tried, you know, just turning the computer off and rebooting it? Oh, something like that. Yeah, there's no cosmic... There's no cosmic person that's creating um, the mistake. You know, there's, there's there's actually no one to blame. You see, you know, we'd like to blame people, but there's no one to blame really. <laughs> it's a relief. Yeah, good question. Thank you, Rinpoche. I, I just was reflecting, especially last night, about Mother's Day. And, um, you know, my memory of my mother was that most of the time she was exhausted, you know, kind of at her wits end, trying to keep everything together, yeah. you know, raise a couple of kids and whatnot. And I've enjoyed, she's been dead for about 10 years. I've enjoyed hanging out with my older cousins who tell me all these stories about how fun and happy my mother was mm. because they knew her before her. I came along into her life, you know, and made, made it difficult. Um, and so I've been thinking about, you know, the gifts that she had as a person and, and that she made those available to me. And so I'm wondering, you know, if, if my strongest memory of her is sort of this person that never had any energy for me or was always tired and stuff, but I know that she had these wonderful qualities that she gave me. Are there parallels to that in our practice? You know, that some, that sort of the samsaric qualities stick out, stand out so much, and, and the the Buddha nature qualities don't really occur to us as much? We, we generally have to be told uh, the truth, and 
pointed to our Buddha nature. Um, tradition and lineage hopefully keeps those archetypes alive. So in um, traditional cultures that I've hung out with, just mainly Tibetans, who are still pretty tribal and traditional, um, uh, the archetype of mother always comes first. The mother has got to be good because it gave us human birth, right? So you're, you're, it's going to be very difficult in old style Tibetans to say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking negative thoughts about it, their mother. I mean, if you ask them personally, like, did your mother have some faults? They're going to go, yes, you know. But the, the primary mother as, as the one that's the union of emptiness and um, appearance, the one that uh, gives birth, is always going to be archetypal first. So with modern society, um, the archetypal world has basically collapsed, right? So um, one of our missions here is to to rebuild that, and that we rebuild that through, you know, um, Lama, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha like that, you know, where we're we're putting their archetypal truth first, like that. But um, it's we're we're a little bit trained through Western education. Uh, to be slightly skeptical, um, and uh, why are photographers the teaching problem first, and the uh, archetypal, the essential truth second, right? Or traditional organizations, um, even in Europe, were that way. But you know, some of the essential truths might have been distorted. But the general human beings, um, uh, I think, need to uh, have the ex existential truth. Um, subordinated to the archetypal one um, before they're united. Oh, yeah. So for those of us that grew up in this culture and time of that collapse, then is the answer similar to the answer to Daniel's question where we just have to repattern that thinking for ourselves? Yeah, generally we have to meditate on archetypal mother, um, uh, you know, like Tara, um, or human beings, mothers like Yeshu Sogyal or Lachik or contemporary teachers, you know, like that, um, to repair that kind of primal trust, right? Like that, because uh, the primal trust is going to go to the archetype. Um, whereas if you try to have primal trust in um, the existential being, you know, that's more difficult, right? But in the Guru Yoga, we, we try to combine those, you know, the um, the archetypal and the personal world come together interdependently. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. The, the problem with um, Buddhism is um, that's different than other religions is the Prajnaparamita um, uh, is not an experience, you see. Um, so it's before experience, you see, wisdom, wisdom doesn't have experiential content. It's the mind is completely clear and doesn't have any particular flavor, you see. Um, and we're always looking for a flavor. We're always looking like there's the mind energy there, you know, uh, and of course, there is energy that accompanies uh, insight at all times because cause and effect, appearance, and emptiness, and mind can't be separate, right? But the essential nature of mind is absolutely it has no experience. It's just pure recognition. Pure recognition doesn't have an experience. So um, the downside of the New Age um, kind of California approach is that everything's got to be an experience to be real, right? And you think, oh, if I, if I just have no concept and I just have pure experience, then I'll be enlightened, right? And generally end up an idiot. So uh, you need, <laughs> you know, so that's just chasing uh, sensory experience. Generally, it just comes down to that. Like, if I feel something, then that automatically is true. And that, um, that works if people are basically kind of nice. So I do know a lot of nice feeling people, but but still there's not the recognition nature. So you follow after the feeling and get trapped, see? So the, the wisdom mind itself has absolutely no content. That's just pure knowing and doesn't have 
I mean, it, it will have a content in the sense that, um, you know, if you take, say, if you take a crystal and you put it on red brocade, it'll look red, right? So it takes on the characteristics of the situation, but um, it's very hard to see that the crystal itself has no color. So that's that's one reason we we get lost because we're very content oriented creatures, and we think, well, it's it's just some it'll be some kind of special magical color, you know. So teachers can say, well, it's not red or it's not blue or it's not yellow or not green, or it's not any color. But then we start thinking, well, it must be some special color. I will recognize it through its special color. So it's very difficult for human beings to recognize like who's not in the room, you see. So right now there are people that I thought might be here, but not here, but it's hard to go. It takes special effort to go, well, who's not here today, right? For some people are Mother's Day or some people passed on, some people are in different cities, but we're, we're generally very positive about our content, right? Even our negative thoughts of distress and hate and so forth are positive content, right? So it's very difficult to see what's not here. That's why it's difficult to see lack of inherent existence, right? And it's very difficult to realize, even though the mind is knowing, it has absolutely no content itself to it. It's completely transparent. So um, I'm trying to give you folks authentic, really authentic lineage teachings, right? And bring the best teachers here. Um, and uh, I'm happy to say we don't have you know, a super huge sangha, you know, because if I said enlightenment is an experience, wisdom is an experience, then you would pay a lot of money for it, you see? Because <laughs> you'd be having something to take home with you, right? So um, uh, it doesn't feel very attractive and, until you see that um, the wisdom mind is complete liberation, right? So uh, it's like you're not trapped. But uh, we generally don't appreciate freedom until we are trapped, right? So the uh, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh recently passed away, wonderful teacher, said, well, we, we don't tend to notice the non-toothache. <laughs> like, like right now, yeah, like I don't have a toothache or a headache. And it's like fantastic. It's just great, you know? So I, I tend to more notice like the pain in my knees, right? So, you know, we, we go to that positive content, even though it has pain to it, you know, and, and circle around that instead of going, it's really weird, you know, no headache. Got other problems, but there's no headache, you know. So um, it's very difficult to realize nature of mind because nature of mind doesn't have that kind of content like that. Yeah. Yay, you're on. Um, if uh, wisdom and enlightenment have no uh, experience and whatnot, does that mean, I mean, I assume, does that mean the Buddhas and have no personality? I always assumed that the deities in some way had, had some type of personality through their effort, um, but does it they like go through that like they're <laughs> original but you know you understand Does that makes sense so in the um three bodies the kaya's principle we say nirmanakaya samagakaya dharmakaya so of course this uh we manifest this body and we have imaginal bodies right so we could say we have personality and we could say you know tara and Chenrezig has kind of personality and sense, but uh, the Dharmakaya has no personality, right? There's no will, there's no, like, I'm going to do this and, or do that, right? No. Okay. How would it make the decision to go to the, um, the Tara body? It doesn't really make a decision, yeah. It's just part of like another part of well, that's a that's a long discussion, you know, but uh, uh, you know it's it's fairly easy to recognize their monarchy, right? We just say there's the chair, there's the people, 
uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to really have a real Sembo Gitai experience. Um, we, we need to do a lot of practice, you know, to just to see, um, uh, you know, appearance or imagination without a sense of self connected, right? I mean, Ramanakai doesn't have any self either, right? Really, the heart doesn't say, I'm a heart and I belong to so-and-so, you know? So, um, but it's really hard to realize that, you know, the, the Dharmakaya doesn't, ha doesn't even say, I'm Buddha, right? Not necessary. Right. So, you know, following middle way teachings, uh, Madhimaka teachings, you know, of course, um, you can't even find emptiness as something separate, right? There's, there's no sign. <laughs> there's no sign that says now now you've reached emptiness, right? Yeah. So it's really hard to appreciate freedom, you know, complete liberation, because uh, we're always looking for some positive content, like I feel the freedom, you know? It's just, uh, it's closest to space where the definite space is, there's no obstruction, right? And then, you know, there there is something where the mind can recognize the mind, and it's very weird. You know, even though there's no content, it's just pure knowing, um, which is freedom because there's no there's no blockage. You don't, uh, you just like, well, that's weird. I'm free, and it's not free because I can do blank, blank, blank. It's just free. So we can do blank. We can do something, you know. But it's a little bit like they say, like you're standing on the North Pole and. Uh, you're always, you know, every step's going to be south, right? <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's really the realization of freedom and nature of mind, uh, interestingly, can, can broaden and expand so that uh, these situations that once felt claustrophobic or impossible or aggressive or sticky can start feeling well, this is kind of weird. There's some freedom here. There's many opportunities and options. Whereas we know in samsara, um, uh, things get restricted to very, you know, the, the only option is to drop a bomb or something, right? There's no other option. So in liberation, uh, wisdom, there's always a lot of options. Like that. Interesting. Yay. <laughs> a second all right one more i was just curious uh would you say that bodhisattva training then is learning how to become good mommies ourselves so <laughs> um i don't think you have you know even just taking refuge is how to be a good mommy to ourselves right because uh, we're we're learning where to go for support. We're learning the truth, right? Um, so instead of taking refuge in things that are going to be harmful and unwholesome, we take refuge in the truth and wholesome things. So it starts there, you know. But is really an interesting kind of development, you know, because uh, there's already some wisdom there, right? You know, like Bodhisattva wisdom is, you know. Um, we're, we're working the paramitas and the bodhisattva bhumis and stuff. So there's some initial recognition that that um, things are completely open like that. But um, we're having to, you know, integrate it like that. So definitely people have insights, and um, uh, but the insights, the awakening or little awakenings, don't um, cancel out the stupid karma things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some things are like you, you're not, um, you know, you can take your foot off the accelerator, right? But um, uh, you still have to roll to a stop. You see, so that's that's what tricky is. People have insights, of course, and then they can't understand why you know, you know, bad stuff still happening. Well. Um, and it's going to keep rolling on, you see. That's we're, we're not going to create new problems, hopefully, but we're we're going to experience um, uh, the result. So even the Buddha experienced some results, right? His 
So his cousin and various people tried to kill him, just like people are interested in killing me, right? You know, so that's, you know, I can say, well, that's that karma. So, you know, traditional teaching is I would have some kind of um, prior, you know, thing with Burton Day, right? You know, and something going on. Um, many times people are a little bit um, psychotic because they believe like someone has a secret, you know, that um, they're withholding, right? So in the past, people have gotten angry with me when they think I have a secret, you know, that enlightenment secret that I can then bestow on them, right? And I'm withholding it, right? So that brings up a lot of anger, you know, why aren't you giving it to me? You know, like that. And that's been the case when people in the past have gotten really angry, you know, why don't, why aren't I being recognized? I want recognition, right? Of course, it's easy to see, well, that's like pure ego, but in the moment when we're wanting validation and recognition and we're not getting it, it can be very painful, can't it? You know, we hate this one of the worldly dharmas where we just don't, we, we can maybe do, we can take some pain, we can do without some riches, we can do without some praise, but we don't like being ignored, right? Like to be recognized. So it's difficult, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so the karma is, the karma is going to, doesn't have to like um, come to fruition in a in a fate kind of way because karma can be um, you know modified. We have otherwise we're really in trouble, right? Of course, you know. Um, but uh, so uh, we can do protective practices and we can do things, but there still is going to be some you know kind of karma. So we're going to have some karma with uh, Mr. Day. Um, but this has been anxiety provoking, you know, so, right? You know, so it's, you know, I'm liberated, but um, in that way, but it's also anxiety provoking at the same time, right? You have to think about things. You can't just say, oh, that doesn't matter. You know, we have, we know that there's a cause and effect. So we say, well, we got to keep their front door. I noticed it doesn't have the bar across it. Maybe somebody came in the front today. I don't know, you know. Uh, so we still have to deal with things, right? So it's like that. So even though you take your your foot off the accelerator or you don't, you know, continue the karmic pattern, um, you know, we're going to have it. So the basic human karma course is uh, we're born and we're going to get older and then eventually you're going to pass away. There's not, you know, it's not like you get enlightened and then, you know, you don't have that karma. You have a karma. Yay. One more? No? Yes? No? We're done. Okay. Yes? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Amala. You just explained totally the experience that I go through with my plein air students and when I go to paint. Mm -hmm. Because they all assume that I have some secret that I can bestow on them. Mm -hmm. After seeing my paintings, that's where they come out with me to plein air paint. Mm -hmm. But then I get there. And then I do a little demo, and then they start painting, and then they ignore me, and then pretty soon they come look at the painting I've done, and then they get angry. Yeah. And um, well, how did you? And I say, no mind. Yeah. Now, yeah. many people leave at that point. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the truth. You've just explained. It's yeah. really been helpful to me to listen mm -hmm. to what you said today because you've reinforced and explained the process that I go through. Um, that's, it's very difficult actually. Yeah. But I find that when there's like frogs hopping around and you know, like insects and dragonflies coming by and all these distractions, and still I'm said, I have to, I'm gonna paint this. That distracts and that, that finally mine just stops and then I paint. And I don't ever know what I painted till sometimes later. And then I see what it is. Yeah. But yeah. it's always no mind that gets me there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Yay. So maybe we did it. We can have uh, some snacks and. Nice to see everybody. So I do appreciate people's 
patients, but um, I see, you know, some of our um, need for security as as an acknowledgement that we live in a group. You know, we're not in an isolated bubble here, right? We're part of a community that includes schools and temples, uh, and who recognize that um, uh, some people are uh, unbalanced or some people have negative feelings, and we're realistic about it. So Vajrayana practice, particularly Buddhist practice, is is training for real life. You know, where our eyes are wide open, we say, okay, we're creating a peaceful environment, not just by being peaceful, but also creating a protective environment too, right? We're not naive about um, the world, right? So uh, we we know sometimes we can do some things with prayer, but we also have to do things with action also. So it, it is important to create safe environments, not only at home, so we can uh, be safe at home, but also safe safe environments, you know, uh, out here. So that's always been my goal to do that. Um, uh, not, not lie to people, right? So it, it's, it's easy to go. This is a totally safe environment and no one will insult you and you don't have to be awake. You can kind of, you know, enjoy the service and, you know, kind of sleep through it, but that's not possible, is it? So uh, this is, you know, training for real life and I, Salute the Bodhisattvas who are here and uh, keep practicing. Thank you. Should we do a dedication? Yeah. Let's begin. Due to the yeah, merits of these virtuous, virtuous actions, actions may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha, Buddha and, and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. state. May the supreme jewel of Bodhicitta that is not arisen or rising grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land of the circled by snow mountains, where the source of all happiness and good, all power for children and in Gyatso, things remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May Young all migrators achieve happiness, happiness and may and they, they fulfill, fulfill all their temporary and ultimate, ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. These remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, wow. great wow. treasure of objectless compassion. compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrahani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losan Drakma, I make requests at your holy feet. Alala, just a few announcements. Um, we're delighted to have like Ling Rinpoche coming uh, in just a couple of weeks. Um, uh, if you want to be here in person and you haven't registered, um, please do it now. Um, we, they will be uh, given online, so that, that's a possibility too, but still, um, my belief is you have to be registered online, right? So, yes. Um, so I'm delighted. And then um, in the middle of June, uh, Kinsura Mpche, uh Losan Dalek will be back. Um, Kinsura Mpche is really delightful. Everyone's delightful, really, but like he's really incredible. Former abbot of Sarajay and um, uh, Gumi, right? So uh, he'll be teaching and we're going to request some special teaching. So um, when we're doing our daily practice, then um, these special um teachers uh can be integrated right then then it, it you can digest it right so it's difficult when people just they don't do their daily practice and they just come to like high level teachings or impairments then it's it's too rich right and almost you have to kind of have a daily practice and then your your sponge is ready to absorb right but if you're not you're not doing much practice then your sponge is full of water and you can't take in many more teachings. 
So um, I I want to you know make sure every day you know I squeeze my sponge. Any other uh, announcements? Uh, this coming Saturday, May 18th at 9 a.m., we're going to hold a garden party, and that'll be a lot of fun. There's um, work to be done, and the more of us that show up, the easier that gets, and the, the more partying that can happen. Yes, uh, it'll be a good time. <laughs> and then um, around 11, there will be food. Uh, to prepare so a couple hours of work in the garden together practicing together and then we'll be able to eat and transition into yeah so after the fun of the garden party um you can stick around we will have the delic meeting which is our path to service and so that will be from 11 30 to 12 30 and um as Matthew said, we'll have sort of a snack food thing between the garden party and the deli thing, but we'll also be eating. I mean, it's at lunchtime, so bring stuff to eat if you wish. Um, and after that, right, there's a Sangha meeting, Lama? Hope so. Hope so. <laughs> okay, yeah. We'll have a Sangha meeting this Saturday, so... No Sangha meeting next week. No Sangha meeting yeah. next week. Yeah. Okay. We have it this week. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Oh. Is there going to be a Kirtan performance? Um, yes. It's a, yeah. Yay. Hi, everyone. So got good news. June 8th and 9th, we were able to secure a booth for the LGBTQ uh, Pride Festival uh, to do that. So we were able to purchase it before there was, um, uh, what is it called, a late fee imposed? Yes, big cost increase. So with that in mind, it, we're still accepting donations. Uh, if you want to do that online, uh, you just have to put in the comments uh, for the Pride booth. And then also we'll need people to be there to help support that day and be in community with everyone. Um, so I'm sure we'll figure out like a sign-up sheet to kind of look at the days. Um, it's gonna be at the Capitol Mall. Yeah, it's gonna be June 8th and 9th. And we also, um, as part of, I'm on the planning committee, I was able to secure a, at least 30 tickets for individuals for the festival so they don't have to pay. And so if you know people who are in need um, and not needing to make a donation to the LGBTQ Center. Um, we have those tickets available for here as well as Middle Way Health. So. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, cash donation or um, PayPal. Uh, no, online stuff is the, yeah, just cash to me and I'm keeping track of that. So thank you. I'd like to thank uh, people. Um, coming through the Samboga Kai means that aren't here personally, um, folks in the Northwest and Oklahoma and um, the places in California. So uh, uh, welcome everybody here uh, here through the uh, activity of the Samboga Kaya. So um, like, a, like a shout out to, to all the people. Thank you for, for dialing in. Uh, to use an old phrase like that. So thank you. Oh, my hun. All right, let's hit some music. <laughs> <laughs> Om 